Hello, and welcome to the Nan Grace podcast. Let's talk about autumn making plans. Welcome or welcome back if you're a returning viewer. If you are new here, my name is Mia and I am the maker behind In Grace. And today I am bringing you a little bit of a surprise video if you are a returning viewer to the podcast. I did mention in my last episode or my last video that I wouldn't have an episode up for two weeks, but here we are with a surprise episode and a making plans to boot. So, um, yeah. So today I wanted to walk you all through my autumn making plans, which I really have zero business making. <laughs> Besides the fact that I don't know when I'm going to find time for all of this. Um, we're also still in the dead of summer here in northern New Jersey, uh, although we did have a little bit of a hint of fall this past week, so I think that's part of the reason why I'm in the mood. But um, as you can see by what I'm wearing, which by the way is the Hadley Top by Grain Line Studios, um, it is still quite warm here. It is, I think, a high of 85 degrees today Fahrenheit. Um, I'll put the Celsius in here somewhere. Um, and yeah. It is the end of August, so it is still quite warm, but I think that that's part of the reason why my brain is already on fall. So I think that, you know, I'm already thinking about fall for a number of reasons, but first and foremost being that this summer has been incredibly hot in the Northeast. I feel like we've had one heat wave after another. Um, which is pretty terrible given the fact that we had a very mild summer last year. Um, this year it's just been one heat wave after another. I think we very rarely left the 90s here in New Jersey all summer. And I'm pretty sick of this heat. I'm sick of the heat. I didn't really get any summer knitting done this year because it was so hot and I wasn't gonna wear my summer knits. And yeah, so I think I'm done with the summer, officially, I'm done with the summer, and I'm thinking about fall. But also, we just got back from Flock, um, so visiting the Pacific Northwest, where the weather was absolutely amazing, and just that perfect, crisp fall weather, and, um, or what we think of fall weather here in the Northeast. <laughs> I think is what uh, Seattle thinks of summer weather, but uh, what I think of fall weather here. And then we came back and we did have a nice solid five days of very crisp, very low humidity fall weather. And um, with that, um, I'll also be starting school in just under two weeks. Um, so if you've been following along on the journey, I will be starting my master's in September, right after Labor Day. And yeah, so I think like all of these things have me thinking about fall. I decided to do my fall chop early. So I've cut off all my hair as of this morning <laughs> that I'm filming this and I'm just ready. I'm ready for fall. I'm ready for the leaves to change. I'm ready for the crisp weather. Um, I think Starbucks officially uh, changed over to their fall drinks this week. I think we're all ready for fall. And so 
with that in mind, there is a little bit of a theme to the things that I want to make this year and maybe not even so much a theme to the items that I want to make, but the aesthetic um, that I've been leaning toward recently. And yeah, just to give you a little bit of background in terms of what I'm thinking, this time of year, I think with the fall and everything, I usually start my annual Gilmore Girls rewatch. I think with the changing of the weather, those of us that love Gilmore Girls, we all just, you know, sort of cuddle in, start rewatching it. And it's just like such a fall cozy show. And so thinking about Gilmore Girls and thinking about the fact that I'm going back to school, I'm going to be spending a lot of time studying, a lot of time in the library. I actually just went back to my university, which is actually pretty close by to where we live, and got a graduate student ID. So I won't be getting my graduate studies through my university that I went to school Um in but because I'm an alumni I can get sort of an alumni graduate student ID type of situation and I can access the library during student hours as opposed to just the normal public hours so I think that all of this had me thinking of a very specific theme when it comes to my fall making plans and specifically that theme is kind of like an dark academia theme. And so if you know anything about dark academia, it's just, you know, it's a lot of um, sort of like layering of cozy textures, dark, rich colors, um, a lot of browns and golds and, you know, blacks and just, you know, just the plaids and the herringbones and the cable knits and and all of that. Um, and so that is kind of what has really struck my fancy for the fall. And so I did create a little bit of a mood board in my Pinterest account, which I will actually uh, put up for you guys here so you all can see what I'm thinking of when I am thinking of this theme or like where I'm drawing inspiration from. So let's see if I pull up my Pinterest board. I have labeled it an academia fall. And so these are just some of the the pins and the pictures that really drew my attention as I was going through Pinterest sort of finding inspiration for how to tie the different things that I'm planning on making this fall together into cohesive outfits. And so you can see there's just a lot of blazers and plaids and vests and skirts with tights and, you know, sort of like big flowy pants and just big cabled sweaters. Um, just absolutely stunning, stunning things that I have found on um, Pinterest. I mean, this this particular sweater right here isn't necessarily a, uh, a dark theme, but just like the cables and the books and the cozy, the mug, like all of that is what is calling to me. Of course, you have some just beautiful movie inspo here. Um, we have, I mean, this outfit right here is absolutely stunning. Like if I could just have this entire outfit, like 100% would go there. But you know, we have pictures on college steps, these big plaid scarves, the layers upon layers of different layers like this picture right here. I mean, how many tops can one person wear? I absolutely love it. So these are kind of the items that have been calling to me, the colors that have been calling to me. I mean, some of these colors, like in this particular picture, if you've been following me for a while, are not going to be surprising to you. These are the colors that I am drawn to um, on a regular basis. Oop, what did I do there? There we go. Um, you know, and kind of ways that I can incorporate this look into my everyday style. So I have a plaid blazer. I have black blazers. I do need to, I think I need to get a brown tweed blazer just based on all of these things, um, all of these pins here. But I mean, just look at this, like the the also the stacking 
of the different um, patterns to me is just like so delicious. This reminds me very like English countryside um, type of thing, uh, you know, something that you would probably see in the crown, um, you know, that kind of like hunting where uh, these outfits right here are just absolutely stunning. Um, but yeah, the barrel leg pants, the barrel leg pants, wait for it, y'all barrel leg pants. Um, so I mean, this is kind of where I'm going when it comes to what I am thinking about for this upcoming season in terms of where I'm drawing inspiration. And so I kind of already had a few patterns in mind that I wanted to make. And part of the reason why I put this mood board together was really to serve as a a foundation on you know giving me inspiration on how to layer some of these items and put these items together in just that very cozy fall way and so with that I guess we will get right into the actual making plans for the fall so I do have a few knitwear items to feature and a few um, sewing items to feature so we will go ahead and get started with the knitwear so first and foremost, when I feel like I think of fall and academia, I think of big oversized cable sweaters. And that is where my first project is going to come in and one that I've already started. So it is one that you will have seen if you have watched any past episodes of the podcast. And it is the Book Club Cardigan by Sari Nordland. And this pattern is just absolutely stunning. It's just hitting all of the things when it comes to everything that I think about when it comes to an academia or a dark academia fall, especially when it comes to the color that I chose to make mine in. So I do have mine here that is in progress. And unfortunately, the lighting in this corner, I keep saying I'm not going to film in this corner and I keep doing it, but you know, such as life. It's just a lot easier to get set up here. So this is my um, book club cardigan. I am just about done with the body. I have maybe three more rows of the ribbing to go before I do the tubular bind off. And then the plan is I'm going to pick up the button band and then do the sleeves last. And so this is, let's see if I can get a little closer uh, the colors are definitely quite distorted right now, so I will go ahead and post a picture for you all of what the color looks like. But this is a very rich sort of terracotta color, and I do have a ball of it right here. And the yarn that I'm using is Wool Dreamers Moda in the color 246. So let's see if you guys can see that. Um, it looks like it's a little better back here. But yeah, it is a beautiful brown terracotta. Um, it, it leans a little, yeah, it's definitely a nice, just a nice brown that leans a little bit more terracotta. So like that orangey brown, um, but not very orangey. And yeah, so this is the color that I am using for my book club cardigan, which is kind of where I have built a lot of these other items from because this was the first item that I really started working on. So the next item that I'm thinking of making, which I think is a staple for any um, sort of academia themed wardrobe is a button up vest. And of course, Amy Schur, one of my favorite designers has just released a wonderful vest pattern. It's actually called the campus vest, ironically enough. And that is what I will be planning on making this fall. It is um, just a stunning, stunning pattern and I'm really excited to get going on it. I've actually swatched for it and my swatch is currently drying. So we'll see how everything turns out. 
And the yarn that I picked up for it is actually yarn that I picked up while I was at Flock. And it is Ritual Dyes Elder, which is 100% Rambouillet. And it is a light worsted in the color clay. So again, I think you all are seeing, that's actually pretty accurate. Um, you all are seeing, yeah, that's too dark. This is pretty accurate to what it's looking like. There's a theme here. I love the terracotta browns this year. That's kind of what has been appealing to me <laughs> this year. Um, and yeah, so that is going to be the next item that I work up this fall. The next item that I'm planning on working up is one that I actually have now knit twice. So this is going to be my third version and it is a pattern that has not yet been released. So um, I will be linking one of my project pages down below so that when it is released in late September, you all can snag it up. But again, it's another Amy Sher pattern and this is a pattern that I am testing for them called the Hibernate Pullover. And this is a very classic DK weight um, pullover. I guess, is it DK weight? Yes, it's DK weight. <laughs> it is a DK weight pullover. It is knit at, I want to say, 21 stitches to 4 inches. And it is, you know, has a, a modest v-neck it has just slim tapered sleeves it is a compound raglan so it really hugs your shoulders really well and I have knit two versions uh, the version that I will pop some pictures up here for you all is one that I knit in Pearl Soho Goodwill so it's a little bit more of a kind of sporty fit because the Goodwill is knit up at a much looser gauge than you normally would knit it up um, my second version that I knit up I knit up using a fingering and a mohair together so that's more of that classic tailored sort of v-neck sweater look and I did pick up some more yarn when I was out in Seattle for a third version because my first two versions were in colors so one was the green and one is actually plum rose by KFO which I think is a perfect fall color if you ask me but I did want to make a black version and so I picked up some black yarn while I was out in Seattle and this is Lang Venus which is a 50-50 merino and cotton blend and it's actually a chain net yarn so I'm really looking forward to wearing this um, pullover this fall because I think the combo of the wool being 50-50 merino and cotton and the fact that it's a chainette will just give it a very airy fabric while still looking very tailored and very sleek. And this is one that I think I could really layer a lot of things under, a lot of things over because it's not an incredibly bulky pullover. So you could very easily layer a collared shirt with your pullover with an oversized blazer on top with your jacket on top of that if you wanted to. And so yeah, that is the next pattern that I'm planning on making this fall. And so, of course, if we are talking about fall, we are talking about scarves and bundling up. And recently, I did fall prey to the tiny scarf movement. And so I am planning on making a tiny scarf for the fall. The scarf that I'm planning on making is the L scarf by Kadri. And I believe that this is a paid for pattern, but it might be one of those that if you are signed up for their newsletter, either you get free when you sign up or it was one that was released for free uh, to uh, the newsletter subscribers because I definitely do recall getting this pattern as part of one of Kadri's newsletters. But what I really, really love about this pattern is not only is it a tiny scarf, but it is a necktie style scarf. So I think that that'll be really perfect, sort of wrapped around my neck. It looks like a little necktie. I could tuck it into my V-neck, either pullover or vest, and just have that little bit of like a gentleman's like 
kind of what what is it called like a, a just like a knot um a cravat style um tie situation and so that is the little accessory that i am planning on knitting up this fall and i actually have two options for the color that i will be using and um i haven't mentioned already but if you haven't watched my uh, flock recap video that's where I go over in depth all of the yarn that I bought while I was on that trip so I will link it up above for you all but I picked up some Sandra Yarn Co Sunday, Sunday Morning Luxe Sport which is a BFL Massim Cashmere blend and I picked it up in two different colors and so maybe this is where you all can help me decide what color I should knit this up in and so the two colors that i got are perfectly burnt and heirloom which again no surprise as to these colors that i got and the lighting keeps coming in and out so um what i'll try to do is i will uh take a picture of these and insert the picture here for you all to see so that you can help me decide which color i should knit this scarf up in and so when it comes to knitwear, I have one final item to share with you all, which is an honorable mention of sorts. Um, this is the Frisky Witch by Thea Coleman. And when I was looking through my pattern library, deciding what it was that I wanted to knit for fall, I um, had this, I have this pattern in my library. And um, I just recall being really drawn to it. Um, the the pattern is just absolutely stunning. It's these ribs um, that essentially you know, sort of turn into these big chunky cables with a really big chunky um, turtleneck and it is a vest. So it is kind of just like a drop shoulder vest situation. And I remember falling in love when Thea released this pattern and I absolutely, I bought it right away and it's been in my library since. And it's one of those patterns that, you know, you keep sort of finding the new thing and the new thing and you forget about the patterns that you already bought and so I did pick some yarn from my stash that could potentially turn into this beautiful vest if I have time because again I will be going back to school so I'm not sure how much knitting time I will be having this fall but I if I do have time this is a pattern that I would absolutely love to cast on this fall and I think would definitely fit that sort of dark academia vibes and the yarn that I have in stash that I would use for it is Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool and this is in the color Nature's Brown and uh, so I've had this in my stash for a while. I have a few skeins of this. I think I have like four or five skeins of this um, that I actually picked up when I did a Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool knit along here on the channel last summer I want to say already I can't believe it was that long ago um and so I've had this yarn in my stash for a while and it's just this beautiful beautiful brown color and if you know fisherman's wool you know that it comes in limited colors they're all very natural they're just like natural sheepy colors and um so yeah so that's kind of my honorable mention project that if I have time, I would love to cast on for this fall. And so with that, I want to share two sewing projects that I would like to work on this fall and the fabric that I have in stash for them. And I keep talking about this, but the light is not doing me any favors when it comes to this video. But alas, we must go on. Um, the two patterns that I want to work up this fall, specifically thinking about this theme in terms of the fabrics that I have, I have many more fabrics in my stash and many more patterns that I want to be working on, but I think that these are the ones that are sort of fitting within that theme. And so the, they're both so liberated patterns and they're both patterns that I have featured here on the podcast. I think all of these fabrics also have been featured either on my latest sewing podcast or in my uh, flock video. So one of those two, you'll be able to see a little bit more in detail about these fabrics. But um, the 
two patterns are the chanterelle pants and the hinterland dress and the chanterelle pants specifically i plan on making view b of which is the barrel leg pants so if you remember those barrel leg pants that i showed you in my pinterest inspiration board that's kind of the look that i'm going for with my combat boots or even with my mules um just a very kind of you know kind of like page boy you know kind of paper rag pants kind of look um and so that is the version that i am planning on sewing up and i actually have three fabrics for those pants and um if you watch my sewing podcast you would know why but uh these are all from blackbird fabrics and so the two the first two and I don't have my tags with me, so of course you'll have to go watch that podcast episode to learn a little bit more about the, these fabrics. But the first two that I have are their viscose suiting fabric and in this beautiful olive green and sort of this, um, again, terracotta brown. Are you seeing the theme here? You're seeing the theme? I think you are. And I know that the green is called kale. Um, I don't remember what the brown is called. It's kind of like a, a, a very light burgundy terracotta brown. And so those two I have for those pants, but the piece de resistance, if you will, which is the fabric that I'm really excited about, which I doubt you will be able to see here, but I will um, go ahead and also put in a picture of what the fabric looks like probably from their website is this linen that I picked up, which is uh, the Latte Black Herringbone. And so it has a herringbone pattern. The fabric itself is this really like latte-y coffee brown and the herringbone print is in a black and it's a micro herringbone. And so when I envision sort of my academia fall outfit, which will actually happen to be my Rhinebeck outfit this year is my book club cardigan with the chanterelle view b pants in this beautiful fabric with kind of you know like a black turtleneck just really just kind of cuddled in if it's hot during Rhinebeck I will be absolutely devastated because I am so invested in this in this outfit but that's kind of the outfit that came to mind as I was sort of doing all of these things separately and then sort of in my head it, the vision of this outfit came up and kind of stuck with me and is the outfit that is informing my entire aesthetic if you will for this fall. And so as I mentioned, I will also be making a hinterland dress and I picked up this fabric while we were in the Pacific Northwest and this is a fabulism fabric, which again, I will try to find the actual fabric and insert a picture of it here, but it is a deep burnt orange um, um, fabric and it has a, just a little bit of like an embroidered texture on it. And so it is 100% woven cotton and it has that very like linen-y feel, but it is 100% cotton and it's fabulism. I picked it up at Esther's Fabrics on Bainbridge Island and I plan on making a full button bodice and uh, or a full button bodice to bottom hinterland midi length dress. And so I think that that dress will be perfect to layer cardigans over or my vests over with a turtleneck and like my combat boots. I think it'll just be absolutely perfect and the epitome of an academia fall. So I hope that you enjoyed this little bit of a surprise video as I get ready to plan my makes for the fall. We will actually see how many of these I get to. Um, I think in the beginning of my channel, I was very much about these planning videos and I tend to have backed away from them a little bit as I get a little bit over ambitious sometimes when it comes to my making goals. 
but this is kind of where I'm thinking of going with my overall aesthetic this entire fall and I'm sure some of these projects will carry me into the dark dark winter months um, since our fall here is oh so short we pretty much have a very long summer with a sneeze of a fall and then we're into the grips of winter with a one week spring and we start summer all over again here in the northeast um where i am so yeah i hope that you enjoyed coming on this journey with me what are you planning on making this fall are you excited for everything fall um or if you are in the southern hemisphere you're going into spring so you know sort of similar weather ish a little bit of a different vibe <laughs> <laughs> not so much the dark academia maybe the light academia for you if you are in the southern hemisphere but um yeah what are you excited about making this these coming months i should say um fall here in the northern hemisphere um what have you been making while you've been watching this video but yeah, I think that's all I have for you all today. Um, again, let me know what you all have been working on and what you're looking forward to. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to pumpkin spice everything. I am very basic that way. <laughs> But just my teas in general, as much as I love iced coffee, I am definitely a hot beverage girl. And um, yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all the things like subscribe, click the bell icon so you don't miss any of my videos. And I will leave you here until my next video, which will be next week. It'll be the monthly podcast video. Um, until then, continue to take care of yourselves, your loved ones, and each other, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Let's talk about autumn knitting plans. Oh, well, we're doing making plans. We're doing making plans, not knitting plans. I should get my fabric. <laughs>